All right, me, me, me. Check, check, check. All right, I'm gonna hit those, hit those marks. Ooh, look at this. Feels like we're standing on clay. All right, can I wear my sunglasses? All right, Vince. All right. All right, so we're up here in Duxbury, Massachusetts. We're at uh, Island Creek Oyster Farm. Uh, kind enough to have us up here, show us their operation. From the moment, you know, they start farming them to the second you eat them, oysters are, should be very much alive. You know, we figured that would be a perfect place to come up here and learn about oyster farming since we, since we love them so much. And uh, yeah, take two. So uh, I think this is uh, take three. Start from the beginning. Oyster farming company. <laughs> All right, take five. That was good, all right? We're gonna be oyster farmers. Uh, I didn't like that one, Ben. Champagne and your uh, oysters, and no, that sucks. Kind enough, no, fuck. Me and old Vinny? No, no Vinny, right? Damn, I thought that dramatic exit was gonna be the, the intro's the hardest part. This is, this is the lab we need, Vinny, the science lab we need, all right? Science, Vinny. Oh, uh, you know what this is, Vinny? This is that, uh, that ecto stuff. Remember the, high, the, uh, the juice boxes, the ecto slimer juice? Remember that, the high scene made it? The slimer stuff, the yeah. Ghostbusters? All right, Vinny, we're out here, Island Creek Oyster, and uh, we made it into, this is what, your hatchery. So this is where you take baby oysters, raise them, feed them. I'm assuming this is allergy you're growing. This is algae. So we're, you're growing that and you're feeding the baby oysters and you, you're mating adult oysters in here, raising them to a point where you can bring them out into the bay? Yeah, there's two things we grow in here. It's oysters and oyster food. Okay. So everything you see around us is oyster food. And then we've got millions and millions and millions of baby oysters. Uh, but they grow out in here until they're about the size of a flake of ground pepper. Okay. Um, so at that point, you can hold 800,000 of them in, the, in, your hand. in your hands, cupped like that, it weighs about two pounds. Wow. From that point forward, you flash forward 18 months, that same handful will weigh about 200,000 pounds and take up an entire acre of Duxbury Bay. Wow, uh, so, so they grow pretty, pretty rapidly. So it starts as a larvae where they're actually a little swimming, little oyster critter. And then once it gets, it mixes and it gets, uh, what, what are we calling that? Um, when it all happens, you know, when the sperm hits the egg, what are we calling that? Fertilization. Yeah, so when it gets <laughs> fertilization, that's when it becomes a, a seed. Yeah, so once it gets fertilized, then it turns into this free swimming larvae cruising around eating algae. And then after a couple weeks, it forms a shell. So then after the hatchery, which are in, where do we go next? Next step in the process is the upwellers. All right, so they're in natural habitat water, but in a in a unit or something? Exactly. All right, well, maybe we go check that out, huh, Ben? Vincenzo, what do you think? So they made this little system, Vince, where the water comes pumped up from the bottom, so they get, they're constantly in a flow of water. That'll keep them alive and feeding them, right? And it'll allow them to grow. Yep, so they're, you know, they're feeding off of the abundant nutrients in the water column here in the bay, and it allows them to eat to their heart's content. And what we're doing today is we're, they're gonna be going through a grader. The groups that have hit the quarter inch mark out to our nursery system and the ones that aren't quite there will come back into our upweller. You got the bottom? Yeah. We'll start following them into that. There we go. We got some extras, we'll just rinse them out. This tub right here, Vinny, cost you a million bucks. I don't know if that's true. Very nice. Grab the hose. All right. Yeah, oh! Like Did you get that, Vinny? Yeah. Hey, Vincenzo. Is this your first first boat ride? It's our first boat ride, Vinny. You want to hold me over the front? <laughs> We're heading out to our oyster plex. You'll see a bunch of basically floating houses cool. for all the different farms out here. Oh, that tumbler. Looks like you guys are mining out here. So that's our sorter. All right. So Tanner, he's our resident high schooler. All right, Tanner. Tanner, what are you doing, Tanner? So we are... Taking... You got 15 seconds, Tanner, make it quick. All right, we got, we're taking the seed, we're sorting it. These ones are going back in the upwellers, and these other ones are going to move on to something bigger. Very cool. Did I make it? Uh, you made all it. Right. Vinny, you getting some good shots of before the uh, before the drought, before the tide. Vinny, pay attention, bud. We're working. 
So, let's get this guy up. These came right from that little, the upwelling system we were at on the docks. And how long have they been out here? These guys have been out here about three weeks. About three weeks. Oh, yeah. Much bigger than that. So, box. yeah, look how much they grew there. Vinny, get in there. Went from about, I'd say they about doubled in size, huh? Yep. Right on. All right. And what are we doing with these again, Olaf? So, these are coming up to our, uh, the nursery system up in the back river. Ah, the back river. Ah, the back, ah, the back river. <laughs> Get out of water on it! Oh! Oh, backfired, Benny! <laughs> now, why, why do you want to drop oysters in a riverbed? As you can see, the water's quite murky. There's a lot of growth here in the a water. A lot of nutrients, warmer water, so you drop them here so the oysters will essentially grow faster, give It'll them a grow little... faster. Uh, but it's one of the reasons why the Island Creek Oyster has that unique flavor profile to it. It's, the, it's the mixture of the estuary water and the seawater that together gives it a combination of brine and really nice earthy flavor to it. Cool. All right, that's it. When they go to high school, they, um, they're not on the bottom? They are. They are. Island Creek oysters are uh, bottom planted. How the hell do you get them? Either by picking or we dredge them. So the, all, when I go to a restaurant, I eat an Island Creek oyster. It goes through this whole stage that we did and they finish on the, on the mud on bottom. The bottom. Ah, just like Mother Nature would intend. Our Aunt Dottie products are grown in trays, which you guys will see out at, uh, at Sanquish at low tide. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. This is Brad and Vince. Hey. This Hi. is the crew. So they are taking the market-sized oysters that they have dragged up earlier this morning, and they are sorting them by size and counting them up by 100 counts. These are market size, and these will be bagged up and shipped to Manhattan tomorrow. Wow. Drive hey, Vinny, look. I found your relatives. Crabby bastard. So we're um, culling through oysters right now that we just dragged. We use um, a three-inch ring to check the size for that. So, and well, it's a little flat, a little shy. We're going to want to throw that back then. I would put that in select because it has a nice, a nice cup. cup. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. What about this mammer jammer? What do you yeah, guys do guys. with these monstrosities? Right down here, these are um, jumbos. Jumbos. Yeah. All right, we got a little small, but a good cup. Maybe a little Tommy. Oh no, it has oh. to be um, round. Oh because... okay. Well, that's looking like a Keller. Oh okay. Flat. I know. <laughs> All right, Vince. Tricky. All right, it's not very easy, Vince. A little flat, kind of a little cup. Maybe throw it back. Yeah. Give yeah. Give it a little time. Give it a little time. Now, would you? How does that work when, like, I know she was telling me before about breaking off the new growth. Vince, I found one of, another one of your relatives. You know what that is? Horseshoe crab. Yeah, prehistoric some bitch. There you go, bud. I ain't here to do no harm. All right, Vinny, enough with the horseshoe crabs, man. Come on. So remember before, Vinny, when we came out here with a little skiff with Olaf, and we pulled those bags of the seeds out of these, remember, this was all underwater, and we actually drove over those cages over there. Do you want to run then into we got the a little, right? The, God, the oyster gods are on our favor, Vince. Does this scrub your camera? Don't yeah. worry about Vince's camera. Okay. All right, God is speaking to us, Vince. Don't, oh. don't interrupt the oyster gods. Let's just have a moment. <laughs> oh, look who joined the party. Our little Vinny, afraid of the rain. So we sorted them all out by size, and these are at the right size where we're going to bring them to finish into the, into the bay waters. At two years is when they pull them, and that's when they go right to the... Uh, the restaurants and the consumer. You following me here, Ben? What do you think, Vinny? We, we fold up this whole little video idea and we just become oyster farmers up here, huh? Not a bad life. Do oysters, I mean, this might be a stupid question, Vinny might want to pay attention. <laughs> do oysters, can they move like clams? Nope. Where'd Vinny go? Vinny, did you hear that about the winter? So in the winter, they take every single oyster out of the water and they put them in the basement of that house down there. Go ahead, take a look. They have like a big root cellar and they can stay out of the water that long and then come springtime, all of them go back out here. Vinny, oysters? That's the new way of serving an oyster. Vinny, oyster? 
no one's doing that yet. That might be the stupidest thing I ever said, man. All right, so we're standing here, and you're the, the founder. Founder, owner. Starter, owner. Yeah. Man with the plan, uh, Skip Bennett from Island Creek Oyster. When did you get started? How long have you been oyster farming? I started growing clams in 1990. Clams and, uh, you started with. And then they all died in uh, <laughs> 1995, and I switched to oysters. There's so many different influences that create the flavor nuance. Um, you know, they, these are exposed for a long time, but they're also really close to the opening of the bay here to where pure seawater comes sure. in. So when we started growing them out here, I was sure that these were going to be super salty. And they're not. A little which, more minerally. Yeah. And, yeah, real sweet. Real sweet. Uh, they almost have like a crab meat flavor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Now, I know a lot of, in some places, they're using oysters not to, just to eat. Yeah. They'll put them in polluted water systems. Well, they do that in, in like in uh, New York in the harbor. They're trying to grow some oysters. But even out here, they're doing an ecological service by removing um, excessive algae blooms. And they can remove nitrogen, too. Oh, wow. And turn nitrogen back into gas. It's a perfect food. Yeah, it's a perfect <laughs> Win-win for food. everyone, yeah? Oh, good googly moogly. Oh, it reminds me of the time I sold my Fortune 500 company, and now it's just golf and rosé. Hard day oyster farming. We'll have one of the gentlemen maybe show us how to properly shuck an oyster. Vinny, this feels a little weird. Well, shut up, Vince. Awesome. Vince, don't film this one. <laughs> Come on, man. So what we like to say about these things is these oysters take two years to grow. Okay. It takes two seconds to screw them up. Not to jump in front of you, but I see how you're holding it. And you notice like an oyster usually has like a cup. So Absolutely. you're kind of, that, that's where you're going to want to put the cup down, right? Yeah, if you think about it, you want the cup to hold all the meat. And you definitely want to hold all the salt water yeah, inside because part of the experience, right? You're yeah, getting a little sure. sip of Duxbury Bay water in New York City. When you're shucking, if you hold the oyster in the palm of your hand and you have the hinge, the little pointy part pointed back at you, so what you want to do is you go into that pointy part right there. Right. The other thing, the reason why I put it in my hand facing away from me, mm -hmm. the adductor muscle, right. the little thing that holds the two shells together, is right there. And those are the two key points that you're trying to separate. The hinge is where the two shells attach to each other, and then the, and the muscle is what, it, what keeps the shell attached to the oyster. So you want to go in at like a 45 degree -ish 45, angle. Okay. And the oyster will tell you the angle. You know, when you, you do go a good down. one, it just kind of, it's like putting a key and it just pops. It exactly. Just like wants them. Exactly. So what you do is uh, put it into the hinge, and then you twist back and forth, and you wiggle. And when I say twist and wiggle, I mean, you're going back and forth like this, and then you're twisting the knife uh, okay, so you along want to go the like center that, axis. And a little bit like, oops, exactly. See, mine even wanted to pop open. There, there you go. What you want to do at this point is you're going to twist the knife all the way around so that's perpendicular to the shell. What you're doing is you're popping that shell up. Oh, mine broke. Yours broke. User error. You can start over can if you, you want. Can you fix this? Yes, you can do oyster surgery. Let's do oyster surgery. Yeah, so you can. You got to cut the muscle out. You do the Philly flip, as we call it, oh, and you flip you it hide over it. Hide your so that the bottom belly is exposed, oh, and not like the part that. that you screwed up. What'd you call it? The Philly flip. The Philly flip. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Where does that name come from? I think Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Getting back to the yeah, yeah. your standard shucking. So now what you want to remember that muscle is right there, and this is the number one way people screw it up. What you want to do is you think about it like you're peeling an apple or a potato or something. You want to grind this knife right along the top ride shell. Like the top that. of the shell. So the you goal don't... is that when you take that top shell off, there's no gross meat dangling off okay. of it. So you grind it along the top like so. Oh yeah, that clean. So if it's good, then you got no meat on the on the top shell there. So you might have some schmutz in here. Well, schmutz. And you just take your, your pinky and kind of clear that out. So now you're looking at it, you can see the muscle. And this is another part where people screwed up because what they do is they go in and try to use like the sharp blade of the knife to cut away at the muscle. Mm -hmm. And what you end up with is a scrambled a oyster. Okay. So what you want to do here is instead of using the blade of the knife, again, you're taking it and you're putting the knife kind of on the shell and you're just clearing it away. Oh, just kind of scraping Just push. like you're peeling a potato. So that way the, the blade isn't going into your oyster. Exactly, because oh. if you do the blade, you're going to cut through the, the meat of the oyster. Well, I've been doing it wrong the whole time, Vincenzo. There you go. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. You clear it away. Shit. And then you savor it. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. That's how you shuck an oyster, Vin. Pretty sure I could eat about four dozen of those. Absolutely. <laughs> Scooter. Enough. We're trying to, we're trying to be quiet. <laughs> no, we're done being quiet, for God's <laughs> sakes.
one of the main kind of flavor differentiators with oysters is the texture. Right. Right. So you got an oyster with a healthy oyster has a nice toothy bite. Nice plump body. It's got a nice plump body. It's not like you know chewing on a plastic right. bag full of water. So that's why you don't want to screw it up. This is why this is important to listen. All right, guys, there you have it. We, uh, we learned all about oyster farming. It takes two years to grow them. As you saw, it's a lot of work. They're uh, kind of high maintenance, you know, kind of a little needy. Thanks Island Creek Oyster for showing us how they do it. Oysters, I mean, no brainer. Clean in the water, clean protein for you. Just a win-win situation. So uh, buy some oysters, learn about farming them. Go work on a farm, do whatever you want to do. Just get out there, get dirty, and uh, get involved in your food, huh? Bon appetit. Not a bad day at the office. You know what I always wanted to do, Vinny? Look at those guys. My whole life, Vinny. My whole life, I, want, I, wanted, to do, I wanted to be a rower. I always wanted to do rowing. Look at that. Hoof, 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 going fast, working together, cutting through the water. Yeah, I want to be a rower, Vin. Whew. Oh, how's it work? Yeah, they push with their legs, right? It's like, whew, whew. <laughs> No, no, it's the other way. So you push and then you, you pull. So it's like, whoo, right? Or, whoo, whoo, whoo. <laughs>